This is Bob Ebermeyer speaking for Chevrolet Communication. How would you like to increase your income by $200 a month? I'm referring to the telephone. The telephone has long been recognized as a media by which a salesman can cover his territory in the least amount of time, but let's face it, it's an area that salesmen have not exploited to the point that it should be. And as a salesman in a Chevrolet dealership, I was guilty of exactly the same thing. During the past five years, I have made a very extensive study of this particular area of prospecting, and I find that there is a key a salesman can use as far as the telephone is concerned and talk to the right market at the right time and uncover untold numbers of prospects. I have talked with many thousands of salesmen about prospecting by telephone, have untold testimonials to back up the fact that they do increase their income by a minimum of $200 a month by the correct use of the telephone in prospecting. Prospecting by telephone falls into three separate and distinct categories. Namely, there are three markets, the housewife market in the morning, the business market in the afternoon, and the home market at night. I'd like to take these markets one at a time and uh, give you some of the tips on how each of these markets should be prospected and the way they should be handled. The housewife market, of course, we must realize is probably the weakest market as far as productivity is concerned due to the fact that qualification isn't there. Any prospect that is uncovered in the housewife market by necessity has to be followed up with a call to the husband to find out if there is a qualified prospect or not. In prospecting the housewife market, the key to that particular market is the fact that when you have a housewife on the telephone, you must keep her as a third party on that particular call. Now by third party, I mean only talk to a housewife about her husband. You never talk to a housewife directly as an individual or ask her questions directly as an individual. If you talk to a housewife about her husband, and if possible, use his first name, she will unfold on that telephone and give you all the information you could possibly use. However, if you do go direct, you'll find that you get real short, abrupt conversations out of this housewife. The housewife market is available for prospecting starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Your telephone calls prior to 10 o'clock usually fall on deaf ears because a housewife has too many routine things to get out of the way in the morning. By 10 o'clock, she's in pretty good shape and will receive telephone calls. The main thing in prospecting that market is only ask her questions about her husband. I can't emphasize that too much because it is the important part of that whole market. The other market that you have available for telephone prospecting, the business market in the afternoon, of course, that's where your gold mine is. Starting at 1.30 in the afternoon till approximately 4.30, you have a market sitting out there that very, very few salesmen have ever actively and intelligently prospected. This market is the best market that you have available. For this reason, you have many avenues of prospecting on one telephone call that you cannot unfold on a call to a home. In other words, when you're talking to a businessman at his place of business, you can prospect for company-owned cars, company-owned trucks, his own personal transportation, employees that might be in the market. So you see there's many, many avenues that you can prospect on one call to a business house that you do not have available in calling an individual at his home. In prospecting a businessman, the first thing, of course, you have to do is get through the switchboard operator, get to the man that sits behind the desk and makes the decisions. Once you get that man on the telephone, never under any conditions, ever use any type of a gimmick telephone call, never use any type of a pitch of any kind, never use any type of subterfuge with a businessman. I have found that if a salesman will approach a businessman as a salesman looking for business, that you'll accomplish many, many times more on that telephone call than you can accomplish on any other type of a call you can make. So when you are talking with a businessman, be very frank in telling that businessman that you are out looking for business and that is the sole purpose of your telephone call. You'll find that during the hours from 1.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon, a businessman is very receptive to that particular type of an approach. Whereas if you try and use some type of a gimmick with a businessman, uh, some type of a pitch or try some type of subterfuge on the telephone call, let's face it, he'll see through it and your conversation usually will be very short. You approach a businessman as a salesman looking for business and lay your cards on the table with him, 
and you'll accomplish just exactly what you want to accomplish. Now, one of the important things in telephone prospecting, as a matter of fact in selling automobiles, uh, is authority. Authority is one of the greatest things that a salesman can possibly have on his side, uh, particularly on the telephone. Anytime that you're talking with anyone on the telephone, you must do it with authority. Anytime you're selling an automobile, your sales presentation should be made with authority. These businessmen are very, very receptive to a prospecting telephone call. Now, one of the keys of prospecting the business houses or prospecting a businessman is the fact that you want to have this man get into conversation with you. The best way in the world to get a businessman into conversation is by asking the right type questions at the right time. But whenever you ask a question, stop and wait for an answer. This brings him into the conversation, and once you get him into the conversation, he's going to key himself and clue himself as to any uh, possibility of there being prospects in his company or himself as an individual. Anytime that you're engaged in a telephone conversation with a businessman, always try and keep your conversation a little bit on the light side. Don't try and be too stiff or too formal with a businessman. The other market that you have available for telephone prospecting, the night market, the home market, we'll call it, from approximately 6.30 in the evening till 9 o'clock. There's a very definite market sitting out there, and at that time we talk to the man of the house after he has come home from work. This morning we talked to the housewife, now we're going to talk to the man. Anytime that you get a man on the telephone at night at his home, the more direct you can go, the more direct approach you have with this particular individual, the better response you're going to get. I find in talking to a man at home at night that one of the best ways in the world to approach him is to tell him exactly what you're doing. Just say to him, very frankly, Mr. Jones, I'm sitting here with a page out of the telephone directory in front of me. I'm just out looking for a little business. Thought I'd give you a call and see if you've been considering trading automobiles. Then stop and let him get into the conversation. I find that the more direct you go with a man in his home after he's come home from work and had his dinner, the more direct you go, the more you lay your cards on the table with this man, the better reception you get. Undoubtedly, there have been a lot of times that these people have received telephone calls, but uh, you'll find that in the majority of the cases they have been some type of a gimmick telephone call, some type of a pitch, or someone calling up that uh, uses some type of subterfuge on them. It's very refreshing for a man in his home, and he is most receptive when you make a telephone call of a prospecting nature and lay your cards exactly on the table and tell him just exactly what you're doing. He'll swing right into that telephone call with you and never pass up the possibility at the tail end of your conversation by putting in your key phrase, who do you know around the neighborhood or a friend or someone at work that may be a prospect for a car? Never under any conditions ever say to a person, do you know anyone that's interested in a car? Because let's face it right there, he can answer that with one word, no. Do you know? No, I don't. Always phrase your conversation, who do you know among your friends or neighbors or someone at work that would be interested in a car? Put that in at the conclusion of every telephone call you make and you'll get exactly the response that you want. Completely familiar with the markets that are available for telephone prospecting, I would like now to cover some of the techniques a salesman must have at his command to be successful in prospecting by telephone to these various markets that we have discussed. First off, uh, we must know who we are speaking with. Now, there are many ways that this can be determined. Uh, there are many lists that a salesman has available for uh, calling, such as your Chevrolet owner's list, your com uh, competitive owner's list. Uh, personally, I am an advocate of the telephone directory itself. I find that uh, the telephone directory or a page out of the telephone directory is the most current list that you can possibly get your hands on. The phone company keeps it current for us. So if we 
do have a current list available at our command. I feel it is probably the best source that we can have as far as making our telephone calls are concerned. There is, of course, a cross-reference telephone directory available through telephone companies whereby you can pinpoint certain areas or certain neighborhoods that you would like to prospect and make your calls to a uh, predetermined area. Once you get a person on the telephone from whatever list you may be calling from, always be sure before you get into a cell conversation with them that you have them in a position where they will speak with you. In other words, make sure that you're not uh, taking them away from something so important that they can't talk with you. Have them admit to you that they are in a position to give you some time on the telephone. After they have admitted that they do have some time to talk with you on the telephone, identify yourself. Tell them who you are. Tell them the place of business that you're representing. And then give them a reason for making the telephone call. Don't immediately, after you tell a person who you are and the place of business you represent, don't immediately say, well, what kind of a car do you drive? Because that takes them completely off guard. Give them a reason for making the telephone call. As an example, a very good reason for making a telephone call, again, being very factual and never using a gimmick of any type. I like to tell a person, well, very frankly, Mr. Jones, I have a little free time on my hands this morning. I thought I'd take advantage of it to do a little prospecting. I need a couple more deals this month. Thought I'd give you a call and see if you're interested in trading cars. In other words, that's my reason for calling. I'm out looking for business. There are many, many reasons. You'll invent a lot of your own. Be sure, though, and never use any type of a gimmick in it. After you've given them a reason for calling, it naturally follows that you want to know what kind of a car they're driving, and it's very simple to ask that question. Ask it in just so many words. Well, what kind of a car are you driving right now, Mr. Jones? As soon as he tells you what he's driving, why, naturally, uh, it, it just follows that you want to go into a selling conversation with him. I have found that probably the weakest area in a presentation on the telephone is the sell aspect of a telephone prospecting call. I have found that so many salesmen are afraid to actually sell on the telephone. You know and I know that it's completely impossible to sell anything by telephone. They've never invented a telephone that you could put a pen down that wire and have the man on the other end of the line sign an order. The only thing you can do by telephone is to determine whether or not you have a prospect and then face-to-face -face selling takes over. But don't be afraid on a telephone to give the man a lot of selling conversation, namely trying to bring him into the market, not trying to sell him an automobile particularly, but to bring him into the market. You know and I know that if you and I create sales on the outside, we're creating a better commission as far as you as a salesman are concerned, a better gross as far as the house is concerned. You know and I know that if we can create the desire within a person to own a Chevrolet automobile and sell him a car before he gets into this vicious shopper's market, we stand a much better chance of making a better gross and a better commission. So don't be afraid in your selling conversation over the telephone to cry and create the sale. Bring this man into a position where he will be receptive to making an appointment so that you can go out and face-to-face -face sell him an automobile. So give him a lot of selling conversation on the telephone. Tell him that his 1959 Chevrolet is worth more right now than it'll ever be the rest of its life. Tell him that the only difference in him making a trade now or six months from now or eight months from now is the fact that his 59 is going to be worth less money. Don't be afraid to tell him that certainly new cars are not going to come down in price. So the only difference in him trading now or later on is the fact that his car is going to be worth less money. If you're remotely interested, Mr. Jones, I suggest we get together today while your car is at top value and let me show you what I can do for you on a new Chevrolet. If you have a lot of selling conversations stored up in your heads, don't be afraid to put it into that telephone. Let's take a look at results from one hour telephone dialing per day. Let's face it, I know that there is one hour a day a salesman can spend productively prospecting by telephone. I know that there's an hour a day that we can sort of gather around in clusters on the showroom floor and chat with each other. Real good friends of yours, good salesmen to work with, but none of them are prospects for an automobile. So instead of that, let's spend that hour productively dialing for prospects by phone. You make at least 10 calls per day, and that will result in one good, solid prospect. You may uncover a couple of additional suspects, but I have found in analyzing this that 10 calls will produce one good, solid prospect. 
I work on the basis that if I have four good solid prospects, one of them should turn into a sale, either for a new car, a used car, a used truck, or a new truck. If you have four extra deals minimum per month added to what you're selling now, certainly your income is going to increase by at least $200 a month. Now you have the markets, when they're to be called, what markets are available for you for telephone prospecting. You have some of the techniques that are necessary in handling these markets, such as be sure to eliminate all types of gimmick telephone calls and pitches. Now it's up to you to get some practice. It's just like playing a game of golf. You don't pick up a set of golf clubs and go out and shoot par. You practice. Practice this every day. I hope that someday I'll have an opportunity to sit down and work with you as an individual. 98%, now this figure may stagger you a little bit, 98% of the people you talk with will, if necessary, leave the telephone, get a pencil and a pad, and write down your name, your place of business, and your telephone number merely from you asking them to do it. Don't be afraid to ask these people to take down your name. Mr. Jones, do you have a pencil handy? I'd like to have you jot down my name. I have a reason for it. When you give him the name, spell your last name to him. I don't care if your last name is Smith. Spell it out to him. This is Bill Smith, S-M-I-T-H, with authority in your voice. And I'm over here at Central Chevrolet, and my telephone number is 98%, I repeat, will write down your name, your place of business, and your telephone number. If you have 10 new people every single day, Around your town, writing down your name, your place of business, and your telephone number, you can't help but get business from it. This is Bob Ebermeyer speaking for Chevrolet Communication. Good luck, good dialing, lots of selling.